Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Super Bowl dreams are on the line today in the conference championship where only one team can move on. It's the Colts going up against the Browns. So let's get out to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland. Here's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We're just a stone's throw away from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Straight ahead, it's a clash to decide the AFC's representative in the Super Bowl. And it'll be a great one between the Indianapolis Colts and the Cleveland Browns. Hello, everyone. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. The postseason continuing here on EA Sports. And, man, it is electric in here, and it should be conference championship time. I don't know about you, but my butterflies in my stomach, they have iron wings in this one. <laughs> and every guy I've ever talked to has all said the same thing. This game, the conference. For a berth in Super Bowl 53, away we go. The 2019 AFC Championship game is underway. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the very, very talented Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck's skill set is absolutely fantastic. There's not anything that he can't do as a quarterback on the field. But I also think that he absorbed a little bit by osmosis. Some of that great bloodline. His father, formerly a quarterback in the NFL as well. They begin here with a run by West. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And here's the offense today that hopes to get off to a strong start. Second down following the run. They'll run it now out of the gun. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. And that linebacker group today could be very key. As we were preparing for this game, you pointed out to me as we were watching film that the linebackers look like an elite unit. I agree with you totally. They move around, fly to the football, and take it away from offenses. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Throwing on third down, Luck. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Emmanuel Agba in there to get him, and that's sack number eight for him on the year. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Here's Pat McAfee to kick it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Fielded at the 20. 12 yards on the return that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And they will be led out by their second-year quarterback. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Too quick to the trigger that time. Neutral zone infraction, and that'll cost them five yards. to throw 
Finding time. Look at the time. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. A good pick up there, 26 yards. A lot of time in the pocket there, and the quarterback able to find an open throwing lane, and he delivered. What a terrific job by the guys up front, able to tamp down the pass rush that they've been getting all day. It's Gordon, and brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. So the offense has it first and 10. Let's go! Green, 39! He'll look to throw. He's got time in the pocket. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Let's meet the offensive starters, and let's discuss Corey Coleman, first wide receiver drafted out of last year's class. And there was a reason for that. When you watched his tape, when you watched his games, you saw his explosiveness and ability to play the ball in the air downfield. Don't get hung up on the fact he only ran four routes at Baylor. Just coach him up and turn him loose. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So that's the word from the referee. Neutral zone infraction, five yards. And, of course, the defense is always pointing at the offense about how they drew them across. Flag goes against the defenders on that one. Now a handoff to Crowell. And power running here down to the six-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Hurry up, here we go. 319. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. That's caught at the three. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. First down coming there on the intermediate passing play. That's been a point of emphasis, they told us, in practice, using those medium routes to keep the defense off balance. And it wasn't just them telling us. We got to watch them practice it and work on it because they've been trying to fine-tune it and get it right before this game. And I think they have to be happy with the result. They go play action here on first down, surveying the field. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. As we get a look at the defensive starters, the secondary, they're certainly going to need to be on their toes in this one. And you know me really well. Where do I start analyzing a game? From the secondary. And these guys have to be on point today. They're facing a high-powered attack. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They go back to the ground now with Crowell. And Crowell lost the football. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. They'll look to throw on third and goal. He's got time. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. 
Now Goskowski will come on to try a field goal. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. And Goskowski's kick is good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. So the folks here in the stands this afternoon, they're happy about that when their guys get the early advantage after the opening drive field goal. And they should be happy. Their guys look good getting down the field, and that's got to give them hope that good things are in store here today. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out with a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that, that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Well, at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Well, that second down run, a big help. The seven yards leaves him with just a third and three now. Well, that's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running play on first down. And I think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round, complete. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. Third down and three. Lock on third down. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside, not easily covered. And then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. They come up in an offset eye. And they'll run it here. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that's going to lead to a third down. Off of play action. Luck. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So now on fourth down, Chuck Pagano turns to the field goal unit here. This from 54 yards away. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. 
Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And the Browns getting set to go. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. There's no secret to beating a 3-4 when you're trying to run the ball up the middle. You have to control the guy over the nose of the center. And oftentimes, he's awfully hard to move. That's why he's there. A big guy, usually north of 300 pounds, is with some agility. But somehow, you've got to figure out how to move him. And most teams will double the nose. Center and a guard trying to move him to one side or the other. And when they're able to do that successfully, as just happened here, that's when you get big-time running plays. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. See if they stay on the ground for second down. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. They're going to look to throw. It's caught. It's Barnage over the middle. That catch good for five. It's third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Let's see what the defense dials up here. Third and four. shotgun he'll look to throw he's gonna walk and this is taken in at the five and all the way in touchdown cleveland josh gordon 38 yards and the browns add on to their lead now he's tough to contain as it is but in man coverage with a pretty deep pass downfield really tough to contain and it's so difficult because every play you've got to consider he might try and run past you. So your goal as a defensive back is to give him plenty of cushion, meaning lots of space between you and him. If he wants to catch the short stuff, come up and secure the tackle, hit him a bunch during the game, and try and keep him in front. If you turn your head for a second, if your concentration wanes, bye -bye. he just takes off and goes. And I think that's what we just saw there. This one fielded at the five. Ooh, with a juke. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now, that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum. Or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top. Or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. So finally, a first down run. The offensive line has got to feel a whole lot better about themselves because I think they were starting to wonder, were we ever going to solve this defense and be able to do what we like to do, which is run the football? It's a five-receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. To throw is locked. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Give him a couple on the catch, it's second and eight. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. 
And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Hilton, the lone receiver right. To throw on second down is locked. He's going to loft one deep left. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. Holding defense. And with the big gain, they'll go ahead and decline the penalty. They come up in an offset eye. And they'll go on the ground. So we played a quarter here in the AFC Championship game. Plenty of scoring here already. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in possession of the football to begin quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. Second and goal as the offense looks to try to punch it in. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. And, Brandon, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try to help against the run. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. It's decision time now. I know it's still just the second quarter, but you have an opportunity to either kick the field goal or go for it and try and score a big-time touchdown. This is why the head coaches get paid the big bucks. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Less than an extra point attempt here. This is an 18-yarder. And Lutz's kick is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So this offensive unit, they've now had three drives, and they only have three points to show for it. Payoff is the key for everything. How many offenses have we talked to that say we have to finish drives? Thus far, this team hasn't finished it quite the way they wanted to. This will be taken in at the one. <laughs> and he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here's Josh Gordon as he heads back out there now. And he is closing in on the 100-yard mark for the day. And it appears that he loved the fact that they're going to play this game earlier. You know, he's daytime. He's out there running around, feeling good about himself. Whatever his prep was coming in, he was able to get out there quick and fire away. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Play fake here on first down. Finding time. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Henry Anderson. He's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sacks. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Give him three yards on the run. Now they'll need to drop something good here on third and 13. 
Two minutes gone by, second quarter. And they've got an extra defensive back out there now on third and 13. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Looking deep downfield. And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Josh Gordon, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Browns add six to their lead. Well, they had gone run the previous play. Nice little setup. This time they go play action. Defense bites a bit, and they hit for a big play in the end zone. So they sold it really well, didn't they? Because of just what you described, they ran at the pre previous play, come back with the same action, and now they step back and throw it and get a big play for a touchdown. But what happens as a defensive back is your eyes have to go to the right place. You always hear a coach talk about, are your eyes in the right spot? Well, this time the eyes went to the play action. It froze their feet. They weren't moving, and he went off past them and caught the pass for a touchdown. The drive there only spanning three plays, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. The drive begins with a handoff to West. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. A gain of a yard gets them back where they started. Now it's third and ten. So a third and ten, and defensively, a dime look. Six DBs. Throwing on third down. Luck. And a throw right sideline is complete. A big play there on the catch and run. 36 yards. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. They'll come out in the pistol. Here's Luck now on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. On now, it's Blair Walsh as he'll try the field goal here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. And now we get a look 
at the captain of this offense heading back out there now. And he's been good. Two first half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence, does a great deal for your team, gives them the lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And I guess, Charles, sometimes when you have a receiver well over six foot, you do that. Just put it up there, let him grab it, and he did. And it certainly appears like a 50-50 ball, right? We always talk about that one. Both sides have a chance to get it, the receiver or the guy covering him. But I think the odds actually are in favor of the offense. They can see the ball coming oftentimes before the defender can get his head around. So I think that really goes to like 70-30, and they should be able to go up and get it most of the time. And he got it there. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. And ready now for second and nine. On the counter, it's Corral. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. The reason that counter and misdirection plays work so well is that usually you've given them a reason to think that everything's going to the direction that starts initially. You've run that type of a play throughout the game. You've given them that look. And now you're going to counter things and bring it back the other way. Almost a tendency breaker at times. And a lot of it is making sure that you have an illusion, almost like a magician. Look over here. The play is actually happening over there, and that's where running back's vision comes into play. See the hole in a place where people don't expect and get there with some speed. And that's exactly what he did on that play. Here's a give to Crowell, and he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. The way they're moving the ball on offense now, somewhere, Coach Hank Stram is grinning. Just matriculating the ball down the field, boys. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They'll try and run for it with Crowell. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Second and goal. They'll run it with Johnson. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit. A great read, and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. Looking to throw. He's got his target. It's Coleman for a Browns touchdown. Corey Coleman from six yards away. And the Browns add on to their lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Goskowski for the point after. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he 
he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time out, another missed field goal, so maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. A gain of three, second down. go with second and seven looking to jam the receivers at the line here press coverage look defensively on second down here's Locke he's gonna loft one deep left side here and this will be caught at the 30 touchdown Indianapolis their dangerous wide receiver, 69 yards. And the Colts are able to draw a bit closer. And I think I saw that right. You tell me if I'm wrong. That was just a fly route, just to go. He went. Sometimes speed, just pure speed, is going to win. I don't care how athletic you are on the other side of the ball. When a guy's that fast and he can just take off, if a quarterback has time to throw the ball and release it when he wants to, that's the end result. Nothing you could do about that. He was just a better athlete on that play. And this is up and good. That'll make it a score now of 24 to 10. Well, it wasn't a one-play drive, but I think they'll take it. The scoring summary, two plays and into the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. This fielded at the two. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him turn. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Josh Gordon saving his best for the playoffs with his third touchdown of the game. And the Browns add six to their lead. So not only is that his third touchdown catch of the game, he's done it here in the first half. I'm not sure defensively what they're going to come up with to slow him down because already we're seeing him run past over through guys in order to make these catches. And being able to try and shut him down at this stage of the game, it's going to take a lot of effort. So maybe it'll open things up for some other people. Well, they better figure something out and soon. They certainly made quick work of that, ultra quick work. One of the fastest drives you'll ever see. Just one play resulting in the touchdown. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And in the end, the decision to bring it out costs him a few yards as he's out of bounds just past the 20. Andrew Luck and company heading back onto the field. And how does he rally the troops, so to speak? He's played well, but they're down big on the scoreboard. How does he get his guys going? To make sure they understand it's not a me game, it's a team game. Everyone has to come together. Everyone has to up the level of play a little bit, including himself, and find a way to make some plays in order to give them a little bit of a spark and rally the team. We'll see if they can indeed rally down big on the scoreboard right now. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And on the ground they go with the running back. 
He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. A gain of 13 and also a first down. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. So it'll be first out here after the run. Going to give this time to the tailback. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Demario Davis there on the stop. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. They'll try the air now with Locke. And he will find his big tight end over the middle. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. Now a carry for Terrence McGee. And a short gain down to about the 33. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Seven yards to go on second down. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looks like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. And here comes play number six on this drive. It's locked. He's got time in the pocket. He's going to launch this thing. Wait, a 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jamar Taylor. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Naturally, we're going to say it was a poor pass, but the defensive guys say it was just a great play by them. They broke on the football, picked it off, and gave some momentum to their team. And now the Browns offense trots back onto the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. And he will find his way forward to about the 23-yard line. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back with more of the AFC Championship game after this. A reminder, as we did all through the regular season, we'll check in with Larry Ridley at halftime. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And that is, I think he caught it. He did, but they'll say out of bounds. It'll be incomplete. Seven yards remaining here on third down. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Surveying the field. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime.
So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Fielded at about the 28. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Andrew Luck now, he gears up to lead this offense again. A lot of the problems have been on the other side of the ball. Is that frustrating for a quarterback who's been playing well? It is, but there's no way that the best ones let their teammates know that. They actually take it upon themselves and say, okay, I have to do even more, or I need to play better. Maybe even say, I put my deep under pressure, and down he goes. Luck is sacked. Jamie Collins in there to get him, and that's sack number six for him on the year. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. To throw on second down is Locke. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Third and 11. And some extra depth in the secondary here. They're in the dime. Luck now to throw. Man open right side. It's Rodgers. Now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Gets it to Gordon. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 11 on the game there. And it's good enough for a Cleveland first down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll bring up a second down. Now that's the way you run offense, understanding your clock situation. Excellent job getting to the sideline and getting out of bounds. That's the way to conserve time. This is Crowell, and this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. So we come upon halftime in the AFC title game, as we'll send you down to Orlando, where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Browns come out on third and four. Gordon's wide open, able to make the grab, and it leads to a touchdown, pushing the lead to 10. Third and long, Gordon's able to get open here, and this long run goes for a touchdown. That puts them on top by 14. Third and seven, Coleman's the target on the quick pass, and he caps off the seven-play drive with a score. Browns up now by 21. About halfway through the second quarter, Luck connects on a pass into coverage. And this two-play drive goes for a TD, now trailing by 14. 
Now first and 10, Gordon by himself here, and he's going to go 72 yards for the score. Okay, Larry, a fairly one-sided first half as we get set to go in the second half. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard.